Hey, I'm Gimma Petty, and today I got this device. It is a label printer. Well, for I don't know industry. It isn't like the cheap ones from Brother, like for 30 bucks or or so. This is more like 450 bucks, and I found it on a yard sale. And well. It doesn't work. Well, I just paid a few bucks for it. And it didn't came with a power supply, didn't came with a roll of paper. So I had to buy a power supply, which was another 25 bucks. And yeah, let's see if it turns even on. Nothing. So, let's repair it. To take it apart, there are three screws on the bottom. They are all torques. Not sure what number it might be eight. Let's take them out. Then I think the whole thing just pops open, not sure. Right, there we go. Easy accessible. There we have a network card and this is the DC inject. And if we follow the path, it goes into a MOSFET or is it a MOSFET? Yep, it's a MOSFET. Not sure what number, but you see that the gate pin has a small trace on it, which indicates it's a gate pin and not, not a voltage regulator, which usually has uh, bigger traces. And there's a button for some reason, and a switch, not sure what it does. Let's go back out. Yeah. And I can't see any obvious things that's broken. Maybe the, the MOSFET is broken. To check that, well, I plug in my multimeter and so you can see it. There we go. And I'm going to measure from ground uh, the easy way to find ground is like the USB connector housing and the network port housing, they're all grounded. Let's measure the pin to the MOSFET, which is, uh, it might be source, the source pin. It's 24 volts. The drain pin is low. And that's because, well, it, it isn't turned on. And let's let's turn it on. I got a power supply over here with five volts. I connect it to the grounding and just tap the gate of the MOSFET. There we go. Now check it again. And it's 24 volts, so the MOSFET is working, but the device is still broken. Yeah, the next obvious part in the chain will be a fuse. I don't see any fuses. It might be the uh, voltage switching regulators to generate the 5 and 3.3 volts needed for the parts. It might be, in the worst case, the digital section, which uh, is almost impossible to reverse engineer without having the schematics. Um, an easy way to check if the 
switching regulators are broken is to feed in voltage. To do that, oh, I, it's not, I don't know, doesn't look like switching regulators, there are no coils nearby. So let's take out the board further. There's just one screw, take out the network card, and there is another screw underneath, which removes the plastic cover. Then I gotta take out this ribbon cable, or this connector, not ribbon cable, and you can pull it open. There's another connector which I take out. There we go, that's the PCB. Over here we have so we have a Bluetooth device even. Okay. The first thing I see that there is a switching regulator. So let's see what, what it does when I power it on. Obviously I have to jump the MOSFET again. Normally the microcontroller does this by some current that's passing through to the side, like through a resistor to turn on the power management. So let's look into the datasheet of this IC. It is a TPS54335A, which is a synchronous buck converter. Okay, according to the data sheet, pin 1 is the bootstrap capacitor and pin 2 is voltage in. Let's check pin 2. It's indicated over here. And it's 24 volts. Perfect. So, according to the data sheet, the enable pin is floating and but fucking hell. Uh, the pin, the enable pin is floating and by default it's high. So let's check the enable pin if I didn't just destroy the fucking device. Now it's still 24 volts. Ena enable pin is pin 7 that's over here. And it's 3.44 volts so it's high and if it's pulled to ground the regulator will turn off. So let's check voltage sense pin. It's over here. It's 0.08 volts. This chip regulates based on a 0.8 volt reference. So let's check the output pin, which is, well, it's on the capacitor. On the other side, maybe. 0.3. Point three four. Well, it's jumping around. I should measure it on a capacitor instead. It's jumping around like crazy. Point four. So on the voltage feedback pin, there is a resistive divider to split up the output voltage to match the 0.8 volt feedback voltage. If the 0.8 feedback voltage is too high, the regulator will regulate down, and if it's too low, it regulate up, so you have a variable output voltage. If the resistors are set like this, so I have uh, 0.08 volts, I have to increase the output voltage of this regulator by 10, which it normally does by itself, but it doesn't seem to do that. So let's see if the regulator is even switching. To do that I have a small oscilloscope. I don't recommend it, it's really crap, but for this job it might might be suitable. It's not really for measuring anything, it's just for seeing if there is a signal. Let's check the coil and there is a signal doesn't look like a proper PWM signal that's used in the buck converter. So I suspect maybe the chip is broken or the output is shorted. To check that, 
as a power supply. I already know because I taken this apart uh, recently and ordered the parts for it so I can make the video that this chip with this divider to, is supposed to be to output 5 volts so I connect this lead over here and there this capacitor is, a, is to filter the output of the buck converter so I can tap onto this capacitor to feed in the 5 volts which is handy and I can disconnect the 24 volts so I don't blow it up further and let's assemble it back together before I break it so the capacitor is over here these two pins and the square one should be the positive pin right so let's feed in 5 volts at the positive pin while turning it around that's not easy I'm feeding in 5 volts and let's turn it on uh, did I hit the pin? Yeah. it does something It's blinking. Maybe it's the current limiting of my power supply, which is all right. So the switching regulator chip must be broken. And as I said, I already ordered the parts and they arrived. So let's go replace it. These are the parts I ordered from LCSC. This is not a sponsored video. They are quite hard to get for a fair price, so I ordered them from them because they were cheap. And I didn't want to pay like 50 bucks for shipping on Mauser. So let's desolder this part. I just flooded with solder and pull it off with a tweezer. I don't want to use my hot air station for this. So I desoldered it on the worst possible way. So let's clean up the mess. Let's put in a new chip. To put it in I just tin one of the pads. I can't see shit. So I put the new chip back in. Let's put it back together and test it. First the small ribbon cable and the big one. There we go. I don't want it to put it back together all the way, so let's plug it in. Fucking hell. So I put the new chip in. I actually used the hot air station because the first one I somehow destroyed. Oops. Nevertheless, I put the new one in. Because, yeah, I ordered like 10 pieces. <laughs> I knew this would happen. And now when I plug in, power, nothing goes up in smoke. That's a good sign. I turn it over and press the button. There you go. Nice. So it was the buck converter chip. So let's put it back together and see if it works on my PC. So I downloaded the software of this printer, the Sibra setup utilities and tools, and I'm going to print the configuration label. I already put in some paper and let's click send. Fucking amazing! Let's turn it off. 
and inspect the quality. Uh, no lines missing. It's friggin' perfect. Holy shit. So I got a label printer worth 450 bucks for like 5 bucks, including the power supply, so 30 bucks. What a fucking bargain. So this was a repair of the Zebra ZD410 label printer I picked off of a yard sale, which is almost in a new condition, except the new chip. <laughs> and yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Gimpeddy. And bye.